Uh, eight months ago, I... Eight months ago, in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> I started working at the ABC um, in the ABC News digital storytelling team. Uh, it was my very first proper developer job, um, full time, and I was very scared because they sort of threw me in the deep end by saying they wanted uh, they wanted me to chart. Um, chart a spinning globe of North North Korean missile ranges. This one, yes. Uh, North Korean missile ranges around the world, and I had only a small, um, only had only a small experience in D three, um, but that was the uh, library that they wanted me to uh, use. Um, so yeah, this presentation. Called How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Charting North Korean Missile Ranges in D3.js. So, yep, my name is Josh Bird. I'm a developer at ABC. Uh, that's my username on pretty much every single social media site on the internet. Came up with it in grade 10 and never looked back. <laughs> so, we've all seen Trump's. <laughs> My nuclear button is bigger than your nu nuclear button tweets. Um, he's been doing that for quite a while. Um, there's also been fake uh, missile warnings <laughs> sent out um, around uh, to Hawaii. This is an example of what how, of how not to design a, a website. <laughs> 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 so, um, this talk's obviously about D3. Uh, who doesn't know what D3 is? Uh, Alright, uh, what do you think it stands for, D3? No idea. No idea? It <laughs> uh, doesn't have anything to do with 3D. It's, it stands for... Anyone, anyone know? Data Driven Documents. Yeah, so Data Driven Documents. Uh, but basically it is... Uh, JavaScript library, library for making cool data viz on the internet or wherever. Um, you can make stuff like this. Cool. Stuff like this. Cool. <laughs> or stuff like this. So that's sort of a spinning globe. It's sort of pseudo 3D, which is what we're going to do today. Okay, so we're going to stop here and do some live coding. Cross your fingers for me. If you want to um, follow along at home, you can go to this website here, glitch.com forward slash tilde nk for North Korea. And we're going to go there. Yeah. Am I loud enough? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. Awesome. I'm not actually going to be live coding this. Um, I'm sort of just going to be live uncommenting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a glitch. Uh, what we've got is uh, just a basic website uh, with HTML here. And uh, just got a div tag. Um, so, this will show up a blank screen, which is what we want. Let's open up console and inspector here. So I've just got a body and world. Uh, I've put D3 in in the web page. You can do it if you're using a build in, a build environment. Is that too small? I'll try boosting it up. No, that doesn't work. Um, if you want, but I'll just put it in there. Um, okay, what we're going to do is create some variables here. So margin, screen width, screen height, just taken from the window. Uh, and now comes the D3 part. So D3 is 
in our browser. So we go D3 select body. So basically D3 is just a way to select things on the page and you can append things, you can change the style, or change attributes and stuff like that and insert a canvas and draw on the canvas or draw on SVGs and yeah, make cool stuff. Mm. Here we go. So basically I've selected the body here and I'm going to change the background colour to let's make it green. So when I go to this tab here, um, bombs away, yeehaw, and there it's green. Yay, okay, we don't want it green, we want it um, F9, 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 which is the background colour of the ABC website, if anyone's noticed. It's not exactly white. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay, let's put a canvas in. So, I could have selected the body and just put the canvas in there, but I've selected this div that's in there. And I'm going to append a canvas on there. Uh, display block that gets rid of the little little line down the bottom, which is annoying. Um, width and height. So let's go here. And in our inspector, inside this div here is a canvas. That's our canvas there, and it's the same width as. Um, Width and height. That's our window. Okay, now we're going to import some data. Now it's called data driven documents, so we need some data. This is our story data here, um, which is just a list of cities, uh, longitude and latitude, uh, and ranges, and scale for zoom. Uh, we're also going to import uh, topojson file, which is just the world represented in topojson. Uh, I'm just, do, I'm just doing an import here straight away because we're using a, a modern browser. In real life, I'd asynchronously get it uh, using D3Q or something like that. Or if you're using a build environment, you can just require it in there. But um, yeah, Chrome, you can use import right now. Firefox, you need to do an about, about config uh, thing, but it works. Let's just check that it works now. It should. There we go, we've got our topology there. And we've got our array of cities and stuff. Cool. Okay. This, we're going to convert it into GeoJSON because that's what uh, D3 likes. And this little globe here is a sphere, which is just uh, a pseudo element that D3 uses to make a big circle. Uh, we'll get to some exciting stuff pretty soon, seeing some faces in the audience. Okay, so here we go, there's our GeoJSON there, geometry, and here's our sphere. Okay. Okay. So, for a D3 um, map, we need a projection. Now think of a projection as a little light bulb uh, shining light on a path, so a path of a map of Australia. As it shines through the map of Australia, it projects it onto the wall. So we could project it onto a flat surface, but here we're going to project it onto a globe. So the light will be at the, in the middle. We're going to project it onto the globe here. And that's what this geo-orthographic uh, projection is. Clip angle 90, so it only displays the front half of the world. We want to display the back. Fit extent is a good feature of uh, D3 version 4, which just makes it fit within the canvas. Uh, okay, next one is context. Uh, so the context you need when you're drawing a canvas, pretty much good to think of it as a pen that you can draw with. So um, we'll get to that later. Um, and then we just need a path, um, which is geopath. You feed it projection, you feed it the context. Okay, I think that's all we pretty much need to draw something, so I'm going to get straight to our draw function here. I might be running out of time already. Okay, I'm just going to uncomment this draw function here. Okay, so currently calls the draw function, clears, it clears the context, which is the canvas on the screen. Um, so now let's see if this works. So basically we're going to get the context and we're going to begin a path. So with our pen, we're going to set the line width to 1.2. Uh, we're going to make this dark blue, this one light blue. 
and we're going to feed it our globe data geojson from before. Then we're just going to get it to fill it in blue, and again we're going to get a stroke and do a big circle. And now everyone, fingers crossed, it gives us a circle like that. Excellent, that's our world. Okay, cool. Not very exciting, so let's draw our land masses. So we imported land. Um, oh no, that's not a geo, not sort of a geojson. This is our land geojson here that we imported. And we're going to do the same thing, stroke style, dark grey, uh, fill style, white, um, the line width 1.1. I found that when you're drawing lines in Chrome and Firefox, if you make the line width one pixel, it sort of gives it a little stitched appearance. So just make it 1.1, makes it smoother. Um, feed the land, fill it in, stroke it, let's go. Yay, cool. All right. <laughs> Cool, it's working. Okay, so you'll see it's based on Greenwich Mean Time. We don't want it on Greenwich Mean Time, we want it on North Korea. So let's uncomment this part. This just uses this helper function to get Pyongyang from our story data, which is the first one there. And it just rotates the projection to the longitude and latitude um, of that point. So let's see if it goes. There we go. There it is. North Korea is right in there. Okay. Um, now we want to do the range. So we all want to know how far these missiles can go. Uh, a thousand kilometers is pretty far, I think. So set it to that. We want a range circle which is just a D3 geo circle. We feed it the initial point here, Pyongyang, and a radius. Um, so this is another helper function that I had to make. It just takes 1000 kilometers and divides it by 111.319444. Uh, so to get that number you take the circumference of the Earth and divided by 360, so it gets however many kilometers per degree. And that's the easiest way to do it. I was, I, when, I, when I was trying to do it, there's all kinds of roundabout ways of doing it, but that's the easiest. <laughs> so, let's see, so that, that'll give us our range circle function there, geocircle. Let's actually draw it here. Draw the launch radius. So, same thing, pen, Stroke, set the stroke, set the, oh, this is because we want it partially see-through, so we set the global alpha, set it, this is orange, and 2.2 uh, line width, feed it in the range circle that we just made, and stroke it out. Okay. Yay, there we go, cool. Okay, now for the exciting part. This is where the story comes in. I'm gonna just uncomment all of this now because most of it is not D3 related. I've just made it so that when I hit the key, it loops through that data. Um, and when I hit the back, the left arrow key, it uh, goes back. So the, what you wanna pay attention to is this transition here. So D3 has transitions um, that you can set to a set duration. This one is one second. And um, we're actually not gonna use the transition, confusingly. Uh, there's a, another method on top of transitions called tweening, and that's what we're gonna use. Um, so you can do a transition on anything. This is just a dummy element. It's a bit confusing, but <laughs> that's the best way to do this. Um, so I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna actually comment out those. Um, just so we know that we're cycling through the story here. I'm going to go there so you can see that. Um, so that's Brisbane, Alaska, Guam. Okay, cool. So here we're interpolating between the previous rotation and the current rotation. Okay, so the interpolation functions get called by this tween function here about 60 times of every second, it calls this function and it feeds it a number, which is time from zero to one. So 
60 frames a second goes count, quickly counts uh, in a floating point from zero to one. And, it, and then it calls this projection rotate. So same thing as we did before, rotating it um, to, to North Korea, we're gonna rotate it just a slight bit every, every animation frame. So let's see if this rotates for us. Come on, there we go, okay. Cool, Alaska, back to Brisbane, back to North Korea. Okay, cool, we're rotating. And same thing with radius, just wanna interpolate between previous and current one, and then you just call the, the range circle radius and set it, and that should work as well. Let's have a look. There you go. So that's uh, 5,000 kilometers, that's 10,000 kilometers. 4,678 kilometers. Okay, last one is the zooming, which is exactly the same. Previous scale, current scale. We set the projection scale uh, to that, 60 frames a second. Try again. I'll go backwards this time because it's a bigger zoom. There we go. Okay, um, so you may see that when it goes here, the range circle gets sort of cut off on the circumference of the circle. This was a problem uh, that I had to work out. I'll just show you. The easy way to do this is I just drew a big circle around the Earth that's uh, 12 pixels wide. And then you get something like this, which does fix it, but now yeah, we've lost the stroke. So let's. Uh, Add that stroke back on. Okay. There we go. And now you get the illusion that the missile range is going behind the Earth, like that. And that's pretty much it. And then we get the ABC um, side here, which is pretty much the same, um, with a little few extra features, we hooked it up to our scrolly teller and we put little labels on there which are, were surprisingly hard to, to make. <laughs> <laughs> also because they, they transition to um, portrait mode as well. Cool. All right, now back to the presentation. Uh, and the end. So, so it's time for launch. The website, not the missiles. Um, <laughs> hopefully. Um, so yeah, we launched. I think on the weekend there was there was news that North Korea was threatening Australia because we aligned ourselves with um, the U.S. And so we thought, what better time to put this out than on the Monday? So 9 a.m. Monday, we put it out in pretty good traffic here. And then, and then, yeah, I think the pink is the external source of traffic. And here is the point where it goes front page on Reddit. So, you know, and it ended up being the biggest, most viewed news story uh, on the ABC website for 2017. So, pretty good. <laughs> So here, if anyone's ever read any Reddit comments on the internet, you'll know they're usually pretty terrible. Uh, for some reason, they make, yeah. For some reason, this one got some pretty good ones. Like this one, no joke, this is the coolest mobile site I've ever, visit, ever visited. I can't even think of a close second. That said, the information is presented very informatively as well. And I can't fucking believe that someone managed to make this work so beautifully on mobile. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. um, lots more. Clever coding, great design, custom animation, based on scroll position. Scrolling through that in mobile was like porn. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah. but this is uh, cool too. Uh, for some reason, I'm surprised to see open source projects coming from ABC News. They seem like cool guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so, uh, I hope your takeaway from this is, um, if I can do it, you can too. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's it. Um, and any questions? Yeah, the thing about open source is D3.js and ABC develop open source? Uh, 
Uh, no, um, it's an open source project developed by a guy called Mike Bostock who does all sorts of cool stuff. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that um, the source for the actual map is on the ABC GitHub, so check that out. It's um, pretty much what I went through today with a little bit extra tacked on. Um, that took me about two months to make <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of ten minutes here. Uh, yeah, okay, so Canvas, I had done a pre, I, I, I was lying a bit saying I had no experience. I had done a solar eclipse chart right before I did this and I used SVG um, to do that. And I, would, I just experimented with Canvas just to see if we could get a higher frame rate and yeah, much higher frame rate on Canvas rendering than SVG. So we went with that. And, and what, GL or something? Uh, WebGL is the next the next one that we're going to do. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated uh, doing WebGL, but I've had a look at it, and so next time hopefully we can do WebGL, which will be even faster. Cool. Yep. What was the hardest part? Hardest and most uh, rewarding part? Um, <laughs> just getting it looking that smooth. Um, and everything, but I, as I said, the hardest part was the labels. I sort of sat down and and had to like had to construct them in D three, um, sort of individually, and yeah, just it 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 was nice getting them to work on on portrait mode as well. Yep. As a new developer, how did you deal with those sort of like overwhelming moments? Um, yeah, un uh, fortunately, uh, um, when you're doing this full time, you can just yeah, take a step back, you can read over the documentation again and look at other uh, other examples online, which I pretty much took mm, a lot of that from just this one example online that Mike Bostock, who did D3, uh, did. He did, a, he did a spinning globe as well, and I sort of just customised it a little bit and, and made it fit for our purpose. So, yeah, I think it's just, yeah, you take, take a step back and um, just work things out in little stages, so yeah, if I, I wanted to put a circle on the map, so just focus squarely on getting range circle, getting the uh, geo circle, and popping it on there, and then just expand from that. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Um, yeah, I think um, they have discovered they're not long enough. The range is not long enough. Well, I don't know. They they've <laughs> got they've got <laughs> some internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you very much. This was my first, very first um, uh, full length talk as well. So thank you. Thank you.